The wild Irongo Mountains are located in central western Namibia and are the original habitat of the African Greater Kudu, the so-called Grey Ghost of the Mountain. I am Henrik Lott, and I am here to hunt with Kai Uwe and Hagen Denker. I carry the Krieghoff Classic Big Five double rifle with me, which has already proven its legendary performance on several wilderness hunts. The Denkers have owned this place for more than 25 years. The hunting ground is used very extensively, and just a few hunters per year have the privilege to hunt here. Only one bad road gives access to this untouched place. The valleys and mountain ranges are inhabited by indigenous species, some of them endemic and only to be found in the mountain escarpment of Namibia. Predators like leopard and hyena are plentiful, and as indigenous paintings show, human hunters have been part of nature since thousands of years. Since times immemorial, the black rhino has lived in this area. Both hunters and wild animals have always coexisted here. And today again, it is hunters who care about the survival and protection of endangered animals. The presence of hunters on the ground keeps poachers away. Early on the first day of hunting, we climb up the mountains in search of kudu. It is rutting season, and we expect the bulls to be in the vicinity of the females. We follow a narrow game trail up to the ridge, behind which Kai Uva suspects a group of kudu. A zebra notices us, and we are concerned that its flight will alarm the kudu on the mountain ahead. Further up, we have an overview of the valley. This is the most original habitat of the greater kudu. He can literally melt into the stones and vegetation on the steep hillside. He appears and disappears like a ghost. We carefully scan every part of the valley for kudu and other game. And suddenly, Kaiuva spots a group of kudu approximately 800 meters away. A huge bull is among them with a special mark. He is almost single-horned. But the kudus notice us and climb over the next ridge. On this day, there is no chance to get close to them. Two days later, we try again in this part of the hunting ground. This time, we try to get as high as possible to be in a strategically better position. Kaiuva has spotted the kudus behind the ridge a few hundred meters away. Now, it is our turn to shorten the distance to our prey. In the shadow of the granite rocks, we approach the kudus. Hagen leads me the last hundred meters as he knows every stone in this area. We are lucky. In the group in front of us is the single horned bull. But there are still a few hundred meters to cover. Because I hunt open sight, I have to get closer. There are some zebras in close proximity of the kudu bull, and he is with some cows, which makes the stalk much more difficult. During our approach, the bull moves onto a granite ledge and delivers a perfect picture for the camera. But Hagen and I are busy closing in and cannot locate him from the bottom of the valley. suddenly, some of the animals become aware of our presence and start to move away. 
a few seconds later, the chance is gone. The animals catch our scent and flee from the area. We call it a day and march back. On our descent, we are marked by the events and strains of the hunt, but not without hope of seeing this interesting bull again. On the following days, we explore other parts of the area. The Orongo is the native habitat of the black-faced impala, which is only found in northwestern Namibia. Several years ago, the black-faced impala was reintroduced here. Despite the high numbers of leopards in this area, the population of impala is growing every year. Since some years, the population allows a sustainable offtake of one or two mature rams per year. While searching for kudu, we often run into groups of impala and decide to hunt an old ram if there's an opportunity. Early on this morning, we saw a group of impala rams in the distance, moving through the valley in thick bush. We immediately decide to cut them off as we think chances are good that there's a very old ram among them. The wind is in our favor, but Hagen explains to me that I have to judge and shoot fast because this will certainly be a close encounter in thick bush. We see parts of their coats and know that the Impala are right in front of us. And suddenly, we see movement. On the edge of an opening, an old ram appears. After the shot, the impala disappears into thick cover. But knowing that my shot placement is good, we follow the blood trail to find him 60 meters away. It is a big bodied, graceful animal and provides delicious meat. And this entire hunt is an example of the success story of the reintroduction of native species by hunters. Hagen examines the horns and explains that this is indeed a really old ram, which satisfies me because that was our aim. Keine, keine Weiche, das ist alles komplett ausgehärtet. Beim, wie gesagt, beim Jungbock ist es grau. Und das ist mein Zeichen, dass es noch weich ist, dass er noch so viel ist. Hart und ja. During the following days, we continue our search for kudus. The primary hunting strategy is 
we rapidly climb up the mountains to find an elevated position from which we can scan the hillsides for game movement. At first, we see nothing but a clip springer. But then, Kaiuva spots a huge kudu bull browsing at the edge of a little forest hidden deep in the mountains. We immediately decide to approach this bull. It's a long way, but the wind is in our favor, and Hagen has already got a plan in mind for this stalk. When we finally get there, there is no sign of the bull. We wait until Kai Uwe, Nani, and Sebastian with the camera catch up with us. Hagen suggests taking a position above the forest patch and to wait for things to develop. Then suddenly, Kai Uwe spots a horn in the thicket. It's a prime bull and in perfect shape. Hagen and I are already in shooting distance when Kaiuva finally decides that the bull is not old enough and that we should let him go. And in that moment, the bull moves out of the thicket and we become eyewitnesses to why the greater kudu has such an outstanding reputation among the wildlife of Africa. It's the dignity and grace that make this species so unique. And once again, we understand why he is called the gray ghost of the mountain. After 10 intensive days of hunting, my time in the Orongo Mountains is almost over. I enjoyed plentiful and overwhelming encounters with free-ranging animals in their natural habitat. And we hunted hard and honest. No matter what the outcome of this safari, it will be a lasting memory in my life. This place, with its unique landscape and geological specialities, with its gemstones and elusive game, with its remoteness and silence, deserves our utmost protection from any other use than hunting. The Orongo Mountains are still a jewel among all hunting areas in Africa. Nevertheless, the next morning, Kai Uwe persuades me to go on a last attempt for the single horned bull. Starting our hunt at first light, we immediately find kudu tracks. We stalk around the base of the mountain where we last saw the bull. Here, we find water holes in a riverbed with fresh tracks from the previous night. But the kudus may have climbed the mountain already. Kai Uwe leaves us at half height of the hillside, instructing us to watch for game movement. He then climbs over the next ridge to check the area behind. After 40 minutes, he calls us over. He found the kudus. There is a huge group of kudus at the bottom of the basin, hiding in thick bush. Here and there, we can spot a bull, having no real idea how many bulls are in the herd. We decide to climb down the hillside behind us to remain unseen, unheard, and to get the wind in our favor for the final stalk. The camera stays on top of the ridge, and half an hour later, we start our approach from the entrance of the valley. Our aim is to climb a hill close to the kudus, to get visibility and hopefully a possibility to take a shot if there's a suitable bull among the group. The moment we reach the ridge, Kaiuva pushes me forward. 
the kudus are aware of us and start to move uphill out of the bush. There is confusion among us and the kudus, but suddenly, behind a group of females, we locate the single horned bull, giving us a short chance for a shot. The bull stops again and gets the second shot. The other bulls climb out of the area while a group of females passes the camera. We climb toward our prey to find the huge bull behind a big granitic rock, which is so typical for this area. We pause for a moment before the hard work of cutting up and bringing in the meat begins, and I let the events pass through my mind. Then auf einmal sagt er, da kommt er, da kommt er. Dann kam erst einer mit zwei Hörnern, ein Jüngerer, dann noch einer, und ich glaube dann er. Das konntest du zum Glück dann sehen. The moment we leave the place with a heavy load of meat is the most epic and archaic moment I have ever experienced. And although the march out of the mountain with the load of meat and marching back in again to pick up the horns takes hours and is long and hard, I am overcome with a feeling of exultation. The originality of the process and the satisfaction radiated by all involved in this primal work give me the instinctive feeling of having done the right thing. It is an act our ancestors have done for the last 10,000 years in harmony with nature. And today again, it is hunters who protect the wilderness areas, give them use and conserve their value.